This message was brought to you by Hustlers University. Sign up today where your real education begins. Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon Cameron with, once again, another episode of How to Make a Living Without a Job. Right now, we are in the midst of a huge, huge economic shift. I mean, it's crazy, crazy huge because recently you, you saw the other video, eBay's doing their thing again. Now, this happens every year. This is an easy, easy, easy prediction. Just before Christmas, large corporations lay off a ton of people. This type of stuff used to make page one, page two, when you know, people used to read newspapers. And now it's just a blip or a tweet or something, but it will happen. So to help you prepare for that, I've made some changes, but before we get into that, definitely check out Hustler University. Seriously, check it out. Join the day. It's a lot of stuff that's coming on how to hustle. Because I look back this weekend over some things that happened. I was like, you know, it was late nineties, things were going sideways for me. I mean, seriously sideways. And I had to hustle. I had no other choice. It was either hustle or perish. And what was funny about this time period, there were people who were doing amazingly well. I just wasn't one of them because I didn't have skill sets. That is key. I was having a conversation in the diner with someone. I kind of sort of know. I just said, you know, the value of a college education is seriously in question. And she said, I told my daughter, if you go to school and you don't know what the hell you want to do, I'm not paying for it. So it's not just me for those of you who like to come on Facebook and it's like, oh, Glendon's crazy. No, it's not me. The world's changed. This, but this is part of that economic shift. It's, we're, let me give it to you like this. There's a lot of talk of the great economic collapse. There's a talk of the debt ceiling. Understand, that's never going to be paid off. That's part of the grand plan. When JFK put the country back on the gold standard, well, the silver standard, six months later, he was dead. Because if that type of accountability was in place, this trickeration could not happen. So you understand, the things that are going on right now have been put in play, were thought about, conceived decades ago. That's why, understand, people's like economic collapse, shit hits the fan, there'll be anarchy in the street. The system will not work for the people who are doing this stuff if that happens. And they're not going to let it happen. Give you an example. Based on the true value of the dollar, the true value, gold should be like 10000 an ounce right now. It should be. But it's not. Why the manipulation and the trickeration? Now, what I'm talking about this shift and it's, it's on different, different levels. First of all, let's take the educational system. Today's educational system is not geared for boys. I want you to think about that. Now, like, it seems like, ah, well, you know, what's the big deal? They need to step their game up. They need to learn. You don't understand. Boys and girls have different energy. And we live in a culture where people don't want to say that. You know, for the fact of me saying that, there's some people who are like, well, that's not right. Boys, girls and boys are the same. No, they're not. They are not. Different energy. You can have a room full of girls. They'll like bicker. You can have a room full of boys. Next thing you know, lamps are being broken and there's holes in the walls. And it's not like anything malicious is just going on. Boys are just typically more rambunctious than girls. And to talk about learning, just to jump into learning. One of the reasons that I take daily walks is I think of stuff. When you're moving, you activate different parts of your brain. You re reduce the stress and you can release the creativity. That comes from movement because I understand that about myself. And a lot of guys are that way. They think of stuff at sporting events, playing right after a basketball game, 
running, lifting. It's just more stuff comes to people when they're moving, but more so guys. So no PE, no physical education, reduction in uh, certain sports. That movement that boys and really all kids need is being pulled out of the system. But girls are more, you know, come to contemplate it. They'll sit there and think about stuff. And the system has shifted in its design for them. And the evidence is there are more women in college and certain schools. But even with that, they're still not making as much money as the men that have figured out the system. And, you know, it's just wild. But the school systems are not geared for boys. That's part of the trickeration, the system shift. So now you have another dynamic and, you know, this is going to be all over the place. So just brace yourself. You have a situation where women do not need men economically, which totally upset the apple cart of how traditionally men and women got together. Men and women had to get together because they needed each other. It was socially sanctioned. You, you, you got married, you got a husband. That's all gone. It's been gone for a long time and it's more endemic because if you look at the number of women who are not getting married, not having kids, it's increasing because they don't need men and men don't need women. So what do you have when you have that situation? And you're like, oh, some, you know, some sex. No, no, it's all about money. Women historically spend way more money than men. So what do you do? You create a situation where women can earn more money and they don't need men, i.e. the dude does not check them like, no, you can't get these shoes, you can't get these blouses. No, it's like, I make my own money, I support myself, I can spend as I please. So you have that going on, and that's part of the system to get people spending more money. It's all about money. Slavery was about money. It was about wealth. It wasn't about personal bias it's like oh these guys we can get them because they're not as involved as we think we are so we're just going to enslave them oh shit they've got skills they agriculture skills metalworking skills understand many of the slaves that were captured were captured because they had high value skill sets they actually brought certain agriculture methods to north america because they didn't exist so understand all of this is about money so this is the big shift go ahead Go to school, get a degree, become deeply in debt. Wait, the jobs, real wages have dropped. You're more educated than you've ever been. You have more experience than you've ever have. Proportionally, you're making more money than your parents, but realistically, you have less spending power. I want you to think about that. You know, I'm like, you know, you're making 50, 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars. You know, your dad only made at the highest of his career, maybe 20, 25 if he was balling back in the day. And your dad, because of a reduced tax rate, was able to pay for a house. Mom didn't have to work and was able to tuck money away for retirement and send you to school. Yet you're struggling, even though you make two to three times as much money proportionally than their old dad. Think about that. Why doesn't it add up? The economic shift. Someone said to Napoleon, why do you win so many battles? He said, I started winning battles when people realized men would die for medals. People are entrapped by how things sound versus how things are. If you feel me. Oh, I make $80,000 a year. Oh, I have a graduate degree. But you don't have two pennies to rub together because you have been conditioned to spend everything that you make. That's conditioning. That's social conditioning. That's part of the economic shift. Understand that if you continue on that route, don't put inside any reserves, you will always be in the mine, mining, getting money to spend because for... For many women, there's something called retail therapy. Going shopping makes them psychologically feel better. And there's, there's clinical studies on this. This is not some fabrication. It has a positive beneficial effect going out and shopping. And that's because of the conditioning. 
that's the big economic shift. That's that's part of the economic shift. Because the thing is, what I'm trying to tell you is if you're not paying attention and you're not really looking at how things are, it's going to be very hard for you to protect yourself, your family, and have the life that you want. Because once you realize what's going on, you can protect yourself. Because even though it's the matrix, there's a lot of people who are caught up. You don't have to be. Because part of this economic shift is we're moving toward knowledge work, physical labor jobs, servers, anything that you have to do that's not like highly technical, like make uh, silicon chips or, you know, until they get to the point where they can have robots that work on power lines. There's still certain occupations that need hands on stuff and they'll be around for a while, but they're, they're limited and they're, and they're high paying. But it's not that many of them. So there's a few things still left where it's no it's hands-on, but everything is going here. Mindset, knowledge worker, manipulation of technology. If you're not arcing in that direction, you're gonna have problems. Everything is being disrupted by this economic shift, which favors women from a to a certain point. But if you look at all of the folks with the real money and the real power, it's still men. Because once you get to a certain point, you have to sell out, so to speak. And when I say sell out, you have to be that guy that's going to work 80 hours a week, 90 hours a week. A lot of women are not going to do that. Most women design their businesses to accommodate their lifestyles. That's, you know, mommy, mommypreneurs. I, I read about it. It's like they don't start a business to take over the world they don't start businesses to compete with the other moms they start a business to create a better life for their family whereas men are like i want to dominate the world so both goals are worthy and lofty however world domination requires more effort more output almost a maniacal drive that many women just are not going to do because they're not geared for that so it's a weird thing because as you look at it, a lot of regular guys, I'm going to say um, guys that are still asleep that uh, are going around and bitching about stuff or pissed off at women or it's like, well, you know, you're not wrong. Things aren't fair, but it kind of balances out. If you use your manpower correctly, it more than balances out. But there's a lot of guys that are asleep. They don't really understand what's going on. They're still kind of caught up in the fairness doctrine. They're still um, looking at the world as it should be versus looking at the world the way that it is. Once I learned how to look at the world the way that it is, my life changed. I stopped getting pissed off. I started figuring things out. I started connecting the dots. As long as you're in that, the world should be this way, the world should be that way. You can't really get a firm grasp on what's going on. So with this big economic shift, the big one, you're going to see a group of people. And I can't really say how big. I can't give you percentages. There will be a group of people who will be living the life. They will work from home. They'll make millions per month. They'll do whatever they want. They'll have compounds, private just private worlds, private uh, like camps. I mean, you, you have some of that right now. And then you will have another group of people who will be what I'm going to consider functionally poor. They may or may not have a degree. They don't have a car. They don't have a house. But they won't have freedom nor happiness. They always have that ache that's like there's more and that that's just like they'll that's the reason people are on Prozac and these other drugs because so many people feel that they are um, missing out. They feel that um, so many things that should happen aren't happening. And they're right. They're 100% right. Because what's going on is this new world is so different it, it, it is so different it's so crazy what's going on 
So, you, you know, many people are kind of halfway there. That's when it's like, you know, people talk about the economic collapse. We have a large group of people who are already in the economic collapse. They're already caught up, so to speak. And that pool of people that are just going to be, they're going to do stuff like what I call not learning from your mistakes. You're 50, 60, 70, 80, $100,000 in student loan debt. What do you do? You go out and get another degree and get into even more debt. Then two, three, four years later, you're pissed off because you're not making any more money. If you're going to graduate school and if you don't come out of graduate school and get like a 50 to 80 to 100% increase in salary, I think you're insane. Now, if the company pays for it and you incur no student loan debt, that's a different ball game. But if you're paying out of pocket or taking out student loans to get this job that will not help you realize more economic freedom, you are stupid. You are boo-boo the fool. You are totally boo-boo the fool. And this is why. You haven't learned how to think. You haven't sat down with pen, paper, and did an economic flow sheet of, if I get this degree, how many jobs out there can I get with this degree? It cannot be one. There needs to be several, five to 10 ways that you can go. The more options you have, the more people who need those skill sets, the better off you are. If there's only one job you can get, understand, you're in school, two, three, four years, five years, however long it takes you to get that degree. While you are in school, the world continues to roll. It continues to spin, which means the same criteria that you use to evaluate to go into school and get that job, it's changed. In the Marines, they have what well, I think 70, 75% solution. Once you have 70, 75% of the information, you move because by the time you get 100% of the information, conditions have changed. Conditions will change in two, three, four, five, six years significantly. You may not even be able to get that job once you graduate because automation has taken over that field or taken over certain elements. Understand, there will always be a large pile of service workers, your waitresses, your clerks, anything that someone has to talk to another person or bring something to another person or assemble certain things. But they'll be low paying, they'll be long, they'll be arduous, the benefits will not be great. That stuff is plentiful. Matter of fact, you may need two to three of those jobs to make one living. One. And understand, if you're not working toward becoming a knowledge worker, if you're not um, really, really looking at making the move on educating yourself, becoming a hustler, yes, hustler, not, I want to, you know, because understand everyone the big thing right now is I want to be an entrepreneur that's the buzzword I want to be an entrepreneur yeah I want to be an entrepreneur when I was a kid entrepreneur was a dirty word when I started being an entrepreneur it was a dirty word hustler right now is a dirty word mark my words a few years it won't be a dirty word people be like Shh, you a hustler that's going to be a sign of respect I don't get caught up in other people's reality when I have the ability to create my own Many people try to superimpose their reality on you. And once again, if you allow someone to impose their reality on you, when you have the choice of creating your own, you are boo-boo the fool. You have all power, all ability to create your own reality, to create your own. Oh, it's funny. I got distracted because I saw a ladybug. And I know the significance of that is every time I see ladybugs, I get mad money at some point in my life. It, it's weird. They're like a sign of good luck for me. <clears throat> you know, I was in the basement and I went outside. And this was years and years ago. Uh, actually, when I was writing the book. And when I finished the book, I went outside and there was ladybugs all around the doorframe. And you know the rest of the story. So, I love seeing ladybugs. But, back on point. When you aren't preparing yourself for this, you're not trying to hustle you're going to get thrown into that category where you are going to have to hustle 
And it's going to put you at maybe a disadvantage, maybe not, depending on the person you are. There are some people who perform extremely well under pressure. There's other people, they wilt, like grapes on the vine on a very hot summer day. So the sooner that you start conditioning your mind for this new economy, this new shift, the better off you're going to be. Uh, there is this video. I'll, make, I'll just do a quick video on that versus trying to bring it in. Let's talk about the sharing economy, hustling, how to do these things. In the comment section was just so dire. That's not real. People were just saying it can't work. You know, government regulations. There were so many things. And essentially what they were all saying was, I can't do this. I'm afraid to do this. Because all of the objections and comments were invalid because the things were working. They were putting money in their pocket. And it just kind of like blew my mind. And I was hanging out with some people this weekend. And I've learned to keep my mouth shut when I'm dealing with people who are still connected. That Matrix frame. I mean, the Matrix movie just has so many themes and metaphors that are applicable to today is ridiculous they're still connected because they were saying stuff and i was just like blown away then i forget because there was one person that was talking about some things that office politics i don't deal with that i haven't dealt with that in damn we're going two decades so to not be unkind and just start going saying you know to impose my reality on them because my reality is really different from most of most people's reality. It's very, very different. So I've learned to be more reflective and to listen to people and not just go, well, you can, because the thing is, this was a long journey for me. And if you're still connected, you haven't even put that first foot on the road of that journey. So I start speaking certain concepts to you. I'm speaking a foreign language. Because, you know, your your perspective isn't even big enough to absorb this information. And that, that was really, you know, as Oprah would say, that aha moment. And I stopped having a lot of conflicts with people because it wasn't like they were wrong or I was wrong. It was they had no clue to where I was coming from because they have never seen this, they've never seen my scenery. They've never walked on that road. They've never in, breathed that oxygen of creating your own realm. It, it's like they would leave here and go to another planet. That's how radically different my reality is with so many other people. And I had to sit back and just like, okay, you know, you know, those things happen. And not really jump too deep into it and then kind of throw out my viewpoint from a more non-threatening. Because the thing is, when you're in the Matrix... Anyone that tries to pull you out in the matrix is the only thing you know, that's threatening. What's the expression? It's better to dance with a devil you know than an angel you've never seen. You know that devil. You fuck that devil. You hang out with that devil. That devil puts money in your... You know that devil. But that angel with all these promises and something better, you don't know that angel. That angel is scary. Matter of fact, the juxtaposition is you think the devil's the angel and the angel is the devil because you don't know that angel. And that angel is yanking on you, trying to unplug you from the matrix. And you're like, no, uh-uh, I want to be, you're a grip. You got a knuckle white grip on the matrix because you don't know anything else. Because once you unhook, you're ungrounded. You're not tethered. You're floating out there in a very strange and scary place because it's new, it's unusual, and it's scary. It's terrifying. And it's very hard to unhook. I did not actually unhook. I had my shit snapped off. <laughs> I didn't unhook. I was snapped off. I got laid off three times in 18 months and I never went back to thinking the way that I used to think because one of those jobs I was actually salesperson of the month and as I sat and reflected it's like I can do an excellent job show up on time 
go above and beyond expectations and still get fired. You know, laid off, fired. They both mean you don't have a job. You know, some people are like, well, I got laid off. Like, fired, laid off, that means you're not getting a check anymore. It's still dire. You know, if you're caught up in like, well, I was fired up. Doesn't matter. Your ass doesn't have a job anymore. It's the same shit. So, in both ways, you get fired, get laid off, you still get unemployment. It's the same. And I sat there and I thought about it as I was walking to the Marta station. And I started actually, that whole thing activated so many positive things because I started to really think. I started to think deeply. I started to ask myself a lot of questions. Like, what I was told, because see, it created a conflict. What I was told, work hard, be responsible, do a good job, show up on time, you'll be fine. That shit was challenged like a mofo. Because I was doing all of that and I kept finding myself behind the eight ball. I kept finding myself in situations where, oh God, I've got two weeks worth of money in the bank and I'm out of a job. And, you know, it, it was just living what I call this dying existence. You get enough money to barely pay the bills. You get enough money to barely eat. And it's just, you're limping along day after day. You're not really living you're just existing and barely surviving. I was in that period for about three years. And it sucks. You know, people are like, hey, we're going to do this. You can't do nothing because you don't have the money. I, my credit was screwed up at the time. I couldn't do nothing. I was ass out emotionally, mentally, fiscally, and spiritually. A lot of people crack up. I think to some degree I probably did crack up and I just put myself back together in like Humpty Dumpty. But when you start to really think about your life and what you want, because sometimes getting laid off or going through these really bad things strips away all the extraneous stuff that you have to look at the real. And I had to look at the real because I was like, I can't keep going through this. I just can't keep going through this. This is going to be insane. I mean, I want to go nuts if this keeps happening. Because it punches your self-esteem smack in the face and breaks its nose. Because part of who you are as a person is what you do. And if you don't have steady in employment, especially as a man. Oh my God. It, especially as a man, you're not working consistently. You're not taking care of yourself. In many circles, in many cultures, you're not a man. You are not a man. So you got that whammy going on too if you're a dude. It's the same intrinsically for a woman. Because if you're a woman, you get laid off, you lose your job, you're going to feel like shit. Socially, a man's going to catch more heat. If you're a woman living at home with mom, it's not attractive, but it's not as dire as if you're a 40-some-year-old dude or a 50-some-year-old dude. Not your mom living with you, but you're living with your mom in the house you grew up with in your old room. That brings a lot of negative connotations when your name is mentioned. It just does. Is it fair? No, but life's not fair. So you go through this, you got to understand this economic shift is irrevocable. We're not going back to the good old days, whatever they were. And it's also going to get some turbo boost. Next five years, you're going to see so much change. You're going to see crazy change. You're going to see so many things happen that will just literally blow your mind. And you got a choice. You got the choice to prepare yourself for this shift and to make a better life for you and your family. First part of that choice is taking ownership of who you are and what I mean by that is define yourself whatever that may be for you I'm a hustler I have no problem saying it I've said it at parties and mixed companies I've had people look at me you know you get that look because someone's like they're disapproving and I give a fuck I don't know you and when we leave this party at this event 
you're never going to think, you might think about me again because I'm a little audacious, but I'm not going to really think about you. I'm going to fill my head with positive thoughts and uh, thoughts of my journey and maps and goals and, and just cram my head full of that stuff because when you cram your head full of that stuff, you push out the bullshit. That's one of the reasons that I really am careful with television. Television, and as someone put into one of the comments on my fan page, there's a reason they call it network programming. You're being programmed. Case in point, men are made to look like fools in so many commercials. Stupid. Even the kid is telling dad what to do because dad can't think for himself. He's an imbecile. He's an impotent. Or worse, he's a, he's a eunuch. And the reason is that feeds into women are smarter. And when they do that, because women make 75% of all buying decisions in this country they're catering to her to get that money while making him look like a fool and then you have guys due to the programming who buy into it and say things like this like yeah my wife's much smarter than me i heard a guy who has who's an attorney who actually got a patent his wife has a degree and uh he he for oh she's much smarter than me and I've known both of them for a while, and no, she's not. She's smart. She's no dummy, but she ain't even close to as smart as you are. But he says that because of the programming, even though the evidence is overwhelmingly to the contrary. And I look at that, and that's part of the programming. That's part of the indoctrination. Have you ever noticed how guys always say, well, let me introduce you to my better half. Every now and then you hear a woman say that, but typically 70, 80% of the time, it's a guy saying that that is better than he is. Not that they're equals, but she's much better programming. 60 years ago, man would never say that. This is my wife. <laughs> this is my family. He would never say that 60, 70, 80, never. But this is part of the shift. Because you have to understand, before you can get the money, you must get the mind. You must get the mind first, and then you get the money. So that's why there's a lot of psychology with this economic shift, because you have to enslave the mind first. Mind, body, money. Once you get the mind, the rest is easy. It is, uh, it is so easy. Once you've captured that mind, and that's why the psychology of the economic shift is so prevalent. Subliminal messages, the programming. You will see this over and over and over and over again. Because the people who under at the top understand that psychology is extremely important because human beings are highly irrational. Highly irrational. And they know this. So that's one of the reasons, like when I read the 48 Laws of Power, it wasn't that I wanted to use that stuff on people. It's just I wanted to know what was being used against me and how to combat it. And understand, if you do not take steps now, it's going to be a longer, more arduous journey for you. Because I looked at what's happened with YouTube. I've looked at what's happened with the net. They're starting to, now I'm gonna give you an example, like Google has this new thing where you have to use your real name. If you ever notice you try to log in, it's like it makes you, they keep pushing you to use your real name. They're tracking you because people, you know, the anonymity of the internet is being taken away for two reasons. You would say the first reason would be abuse. No, there's always been abuse in the world. The first reason is, is so people can be tracked. The abuse is a nice excuse. It's like, hey, you know, people are losing it. People are saying nasty stuff. No, that's not it. That's to be able to better track the more disruptive people. You know who they are, where they live, family members, how they can actually hurt them. And the thing is, if you have your own business and you serve a lot of customers, understand you can still be hurt, but you can't be hurt as quick 
and hard as someone who has a job. It's much more difficult to get at you. Now, you can still be God. Everybody can be God. There's no such thing as safe. But understand, even the system is like the system is made of humans. And what do humans do? They go for the low-hanging fruit. So here you are, Mr. Business Owner, and you're disruptive and you're causing problems, but there's a thousand other people with jobs who are doing similar stuff. They're going for them first before they come for you because it's easier to get to them. Make yourself a tougher target. That's part of, that's the reason the guerrilla warfare works so well. Smaller units, less weaponry, not as, but they're small, mobile. They're harder to hit. They're harder to isolate because of the way that they operate. They're just harder to deal with. So if you're like that person with a job and you're saying stuff and you have certain divergent views, you have put your little tender, par tender parts on the fire. You're so easy to knock off because this is the deal. You're saying all this stuff, then you get fired. You got a huge new problem. How am I going to earn money? How am I going to eat? How am I going to pay bills? That's going to be your preoccupation, not all the other stuff that you were doing. It's not even going to be on the map. <laughs> you may disappear because now you have a big problem to address. So I'm telling you, start studying. Cut your, cut your TV watching time. You know, it's hard if you're addicted to it, but, you know, back off 20% this month. Then back off another 20%. And, you know, before you know it, five, six months, you're not watching as much television because it takes time that you can use to educate yourself. And it also programs you for bullshit. I mean, if you stop watching television for three or four months, cold turkey, then go back and start watching it, you're going to be like, what the fuck is this? I'm telling you, you're going to like, you. it's just going to be... It's going to be so illuminating. You're going to be like, you got to be kidding me. This is on? You will start asking yourself those questions because you unplugged. And when you unplugged and once the ether wears off and you start to like, oh, oh, I get it now. I totally get it. I totally get it now. I see what Glendon was talking about because you have to have that disconnect, clear your mind to really understand what's going on because there's so many things that's happening with this shift. And remember, it's psychological first. Then they get your money. They have to get your mind first. That's why you don't see certain magazines anymore or if they're around that you know, like Slate or uh, Unti Reader or, you know, or back in the day, Emerge, which was a very provocative black magazine, the Keith Clankstone just shut down, just completely shut it down because it was so provocative, it was making money, but it shut it down. And if you look at that, what's replaced those kind of magazines have been blogs, YouTube channels, and they're just harder to deal with because no one owns that for that person and you know google has its own ambition on taking over the world they want to catalog and inventory all information so they're going to let this stuff with youtube and blogs just go on because it benefits them in their quest for world domination so it's it's amazing what's going on now if you want to really protect yourself Make a commitment of breaking free. Make a commitment of becoming more self-sufficient. Make a commitment of, if you don't have any skills, that's cool. Make a commitment to get some skills. Pick two or three things that you want to do. I don't care if it's fixing engines. I don't care if it's uh, learning Spanish. Find a way to make yourself more valuable to humanity do that because understand i believe the economic collapse has already happened think about how many people you know who are struggling 
Think about how many people you know that have been laid off. Think of how many people that if someone dies, like a child or something, and they have to have a fundraiser for the funeral because nobody has two to $5,000 to pay for the funeral. Think about all these things that you see all the time that says people do not have economic power. Think about that. You see it all the time. But they're smart, they're educated, they have a degree, but they have no real power. None. No influence. And all it takes is a little thump and their world is rocked upside down. I mean, I still remember the feeling in the pit of my stomach when I got laid off that third time. I think it was the become a hustler was a re was a defense mechanism to keep from going insane because once again remember i told you there was this clash all of the things that i was told as a child were proven to be false and i it, all those false notions were consistently being reinforced because i would tell people it's like well just work harder it's like you don't understand i was working my ass off as hard as i could I was salesman of the fucking month. I sold three times as much product as anyone else and my ass still got laid off. So I started to think and pull back the layers of the minutia and of the bullshit and of the boo-boo, the foolery, and I started to see the real. In the current system, if you are not a power player, or in the position of influence in that company, regardless of how good you are, if something happens, you gotta go. If you're not a power player, a key team member, they need you, you gotta, if something happens, you're going. You gotta go. Doesn't matter about your family, because that's the first thing that people say, well, I got a family. So, your family is not their family. Does, it doesn't even factor into the equation. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. So, take a few moments today. Think about your life. Think about how you're going to deal with this economic shift and how you're going to participate build something for you and your family build something more substantial if you have a job keep it and develop a hustle on the side this is not you know unless your hustle just gets really crazy you know say you make five thousand a month you know your hustle's making 15 okay at that point yeah you can roll out but if you're making five on the job and you're only making five from your hustle keep your job Stack your war chest. Learn how to hustle. Learn how to create money from your mindset, from your gifts. Learn how to do that. Because even with the matrix, even with the huge economic shift, even with all the stuff that's going on, you still can do very well. You can still have the life that you want. Because so many people are not going to take the opportunity to facilitate a change in their life. It's not going to do it. They're just going to keep hoping that it gets better. And it won't. Because the Matrix has its own agenda, its own plan, and your name is not on it. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.